Hello everyone and welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. I decided to uh, pick this up at the urging of people watching my live stream and so I'll be live streaming some uh, experiments with this and mainly what I want to do is build some sci-fi systems because uh, I do write sci-fi novels off to the side and I could use this to put those systems together and see how they actually work. So that's a plan of mine but Right now I just want to experiment a bit and I'll be experimenting more in the live streams. And the first thing I want to target for experimentation is Jupiter. I just want to see what happens when we increase the mass of Jupiter. Right now it's its normal self and we can have the normal time step here. But I'm going to uh, take away some of the outer stuff so that uh, what's happening is more clear. So we've got a lot of these copper belt objects and all. Uh, so I'm going to clear it out uh, past Pluto and we will see what happens when I increase the mass of Jupiter. In general, what I want to do with Universe Sandbox is not make things explode. <laughs> that's that's not going to be my goal. There are plenty of people use, using Universe Sandbox in order to do that. What I want to do is, uh, well, come up with some elegant orbits basically and some interesting dynamics. I might be experimenting with different kinds of orbits like uh, cyclic orbits and stuff like that uh, putting bodies uh, in uh, in certain cyclical orbits between planets would be interesting and we will be doing other systems so uh, but it's mostly just you know whatever comes to mind at the moment and if you guys have suggestions about what I should do please do contribute them in the comments alright so uh, first things first let me load up the solar system simulation that I had without the bodies that I didn't want to have. Okay, so visited worlds I decided to call it. Since we visited Pluto now and I've got pause it, so uh, here we've got the, the usual planets if you will uh, you know, and Vesta and Ceres in here and I am going to click on Jupiter and I'm going to do something that I don't think will have much effect. I'm just going to increase it to 10 Jupiters. So I'm uh, going up an orb order of magnitude in its mass and we are going to see what happens. I'm going to set the time step to one month per second. That seems to run all right on my system without causing any problems. Uh, it takes up about 30% uh, of my processor. So here we go, and I'll show you what happens after a little bit. So as you can see, the simulation is keeping up pretty well with the one month per second that I asked for. Right now, Jupiter seems to have some deviation in its orbit, so let's take a closer look at it. Semi-major axis, 5.16 astronomical units. Its orbital period, 11.7. Nothing else seems to have been affected too much. We see Earth, of course, having a 365-day orbital period. Saturn says 30.5 years. Its periapsis distance seems to be changing, though. So it is getting affected by Jupiter. But on the whole, I don't expect drastic changes just due to this change in mass. Maybe some of the asteroids we pulled by Jupiter a bit more. And now the orbital period is going down. Actually, I think uh, Saturn was a 28-year orbital period. Again, just off the top of my head. And it seems to be going back to that, I think. Very interesting. Now, uh, I'm not really showing how to use this. That's not my goal. I am. My goal is actually conducting certain little experiments. Uh, but uh, you can change this to orbit, and so we can see the orbits as they are. Okay, it's been about 30 years, and well, right now it doesn't look like too much has changed. So my major axis still about the same orbital period, still about the same. Uh, if I recall correctly, the orbital period of Jupiter is about 12 years. Periapsis distance, apoapsis distance appear to have stabilized. With Saturn, we get an orbital period a little bit less than 28 years. 
and there is still some change in those distances there but yeah nothing drastic so let's try something drastic I'll reload the simulation and we will run it uh, with Jupiter being 50 times its normal mass okay so here we go and so instead of 10 Jupiters or 1 Jupiter we have 50 and let's see how that works go and one month per second Saturn's orbital period is once again going up now let's take a look at its orbit let's uh, view orbit instead of trails you can see its orbit is actually growing right now orbital period is now really pushing it. it's going up to 35 years Jupiter no longer has a visible orbit because it's considered a star. It's sort of nascent. It's starting to, uh, what you call it, light up. And so it's treating it differently than the other planets. Looks like Vesta and Ceres are getting, getting affected. Mars also has an effect. Let's take a look at that. No, I think uh, it seems to have an effect mainly because of Ceres getting distorted. Its orbit is now touching Ceres at one end, but it's actually Ceres that actually made the move. Earth, still 365 days, one year, no particular problems, 22 degrees Celsius, so that's alright. Surface temperature of Mars seems unusually hot. Is that uh, because Jupiter is putting out some... Well, I mean, Jupiter surface temperature is 640. It's really starting to emit stuff. But how about Saturn? Now back to now down to 20 years. So now it's been pulled in quite substantially. So it went from a 35-year period to 20-year period. Let's see if it uh, balances out ever, or if it keeps on changing. What's its temperature? It's still pretty cold, negative 180 degrees Celsius. Also interesting to note is the Sun's path. Now the Sun always has a wiggle due to Jupiter and the other planets for that matter, mainly due to Jupiter though. Uh, and so, and that's how they spot extra solar planets sometimes, is by seeing the wiggle of other stars. But here you see its wiggle in response to Jupiter makes this sort of path here. Uh, I'll, I'll let it go for a little bit and you'll see as Jupiter moves to this side the Sun's motion will slow down in this direction and start going in the opposite direction and so it'll make these little arches from this point of view. So it stopped and it started moving so it's like this and it's moving back that a ways and that's because Jupiter is over here now and so it's slowly trending towards that direction Ceres has been boosted out here you can see now Ceres is is sort of orbiting Jupiter let's take a look at the orbits yeah Ceres is now orbiting Jupiter but it's gonna break out of Jupiter's SOI eventually There's Saturn, and now Ceres is on a very, very, very different orbit. But it's going to—I uh, don't—I don't think it's gonna get under the influence of Saturn. It got ejected higher by Jupiter. Interestingly, Vesta, in a very similar orbit to Ceres, hasn't had that effect. Saturn right now, uh, actually, pretty close to its original orbit, though periapsis and apoapsis very very different and so it's in a very well it's in a fairly eccentric orbit so now Ceres is uh, has an orbit period of a hundred years okay so we've done this for about 30 years the earth is still unperturbed neither is Mars but we start to see some effect with Ceres being ejected and of course it seems like the planet that is most affected by Jupiter tends to be Saturn. 
but let's go to 100 Jupiter's mass. Now at that level, uh, if we take a look at the, the masses here, 50 Jupiters, when we look at the Sun, is about a 20th of a Sun. And so 100 Jupiters is about a 10th of a Sun. So we start the simulation afresh and Jupiter now we can go either way I could say 100 Jupiters or I could say about uh, one tenth of a Sun let's just go for one tenth of a Sun so now it's one tenth of a Sun and you can see that gives it uh, well it's got a red orbit now and it's all lit it is now it is now burning its hydrogen and apparently having some flares I don't know what no, the, no not the best effect ever right there I actually uh, it's actually 105 Jupiters is one tenth of the Sun looks like okay still orbiting but uh, let's see what goes on at one month per second let's take a look at Saturn since that's been the most interesting one 36 years and increasing so once again we see the trend where it's increasing uh, how about Mars? Let's take a look at uh, what the orbit is doing. These trails don't always give the, a clear picture of how things are changing. Well, you can see Ceres is already getting very different. And it's already captured by Jupiter right there. Actually, uh, Saturn is briefly being captured by Jupiter. Wow. Uh, let's see the trail. Just very briefly, it got under the influence of Jupiter there. The sun's path is now a little bit more extreme. The orbits of the inner planets don't seem to be changed too much, though there is some variation going on here. Venus still 225 days or so. Earth now 364 days to one year. Ceres has once again been captured but will probably be spit out. Uranus is looks looks pretty state well no it's actually look at its orbit changing as uh, either it's on the same side as Jupiter or on a different side as it's on the different side as Jupiter uh, its orbit contracts but Pluto here is on the same side as Jupiter of the Sun I mean and its orbit is extending pretty dramatically I wonder if we're gonna lose Pluto well let's see I'll come back to you after 30 years first okay well just looking at the trails doesn't seem like too much has changed drastically Mercury is still orbiting the Sun like this the Sun has its motion that's why the orbits seem to be changing but Venus for instance its orbital period is still 225 days Mercury is still at 88 days Earth a comfortable 365 days the climate on Earth is a little bit hotter it is at 24 degrees Celsius but not too hot Mars is actually cold as expected so that is good Ceres is actually still hanging out here but it's in an elongated orbit this time Vesta is the one that has uh, decided to do the interesting thing and it all depends on where you start the the process out where Jupiter is in relation to Ceres and Vesta I assume so now Vesta has uh, decided to start going in and out with Jupiter and eventually Jupiter is probably gonna shoot it out of the entire solar system but here it's just got a little bit of a perturbation it did a little hop And it might be sent back in now. Saturn's where well, Saturn is not exactly where you'd expect it. It's actually a bit closer in. Uh, actually, on the periapsis side, it's very close in. Its eccentricity has really gone up. So eccentricity is at 0.4 now. Just looking at the trails, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto don't seem to have changed very much. We can take a look at their orbits and they clearly get quite perturbed by Jupiter's process 
So uh, wherever Jupiter is going, they are going to change in relation to it. And that's something that isn't obviously captured in Kerbal Space Program at all because you're, there's only the influence of two gravitating bodies and even uh, just a ship and whatever you happen to be in the sphere of influence of. Here you can see the, the way that the orbits can be quite dynamic depending on the influence of different bodies and here we see Saturn being captured by Jupiter temporarily. This is what that looks like with the trails. It's not doesn't make it very clear but uh, Jupiter's sphere of influence on this side is such that Saturn actually gets captured by it temporarily and then spat back out. Okay, well, I mean, it's very dramatic, but not as, I mean, we, we're still we're still doing fine in here. Yeah, we've got a closer neighbor than Mars sometimes in the form of Vesta now, but uh, let's see what happens when we increase the size of Jupiter even more. Okay, so here I'll leave it to trails and we are going to go to a size of let's say 0.25 suns so a quarter of the size of the sun in mass and that will certainly give us a very sun-like Jupiter and let's see how it goes you can see the projected track of Saturn being pulled in by Jupiter right now the sun itself is very much its arc is now much longer towards Jupiter makes it an interesting question about what happens if we boost Jupiter's mass to equal to the Sun and we will get to that now the asteroid belt objects are floating all over the place getting shot out here and there Ceres is making a very interesting little pattern. Vesta is already out here on its way maybe to Saturn. But look at Mars. Mars now has a very interesting little path. But what about its orbit? This is just its trail, but the Sun is moving as well. Well, its orbit hasn't changed that much. No, it's, it's pretty similar to what it used to be. And how about Earth's period? It's uh, 363 to 365, it looks like. So, so far, the lesson is that, uh, well, for us, for Earth, not much changes when you decide to ignite Jupiter and turn it into a quarter of a sun. But what about the climate? Well, there's severe changes, it looks like. I wonder why the climate has turned to negative 30 degrees Celsius. It's much colder now, contrary to what you would expect. But maybe something boiled off. Let's take a closer look. Hold on. Let's take a closer look at the Earth. Let's pause for a sec. What does the Earth look like? Well, that's, that's pretty darn cold right there. What's up with the Earth? Well, it's still a greenhouse effect. Surface pressure is about what you would expect. Really, I don't see what's happened here. It's actually closer to the sun right now. Well, no, that's apoapsis occasionally gets a little bit further out, but not that much further. So that's interesting. How's its climate now? Still pretty cold still very cold. Jupiter's out here. Saturn is in a crazy orbit. It's only orbiting in eight years now compared to its original 28. It's now actually closer in than Jupiter but sometimes Jupiter crosses in. Let's take a look at the trails. Jupiter's sort of making this sort of path and then the Sun is going in its arches. Mars. Mars is colder. How does this work? Well, maybe, oh, hold on, enable climate. Let's uh, make sure enable climate is on. I don't know what difference that makes. I've just started using this. 
Wow, it certainly makes a lot of lag. Uh, okay, maybe that's not a good thing to do. Anyway, we know that the Earth is icy. Oh no, it, it seems to be on. Uh, it seems to be an initial lag, and now Earth seems to be warmer. Yeah, the ice has mostly melted now. Yep, it's warming up. Ceres is now more a comet than anything else. So Saturn. Wait a minute, uh, what's Saturn's period now? Saturn's period is not a number. Saturn has been, been ejected out. I didn't even spot... Oh no, now it's been captured again. I don't really know how... Oh, uh, because it, uh, Jupiter came close by. Still trying to figure out how orbits work. I mean, this is obviously more complicated than uh, Kerbal Space Program. And so I think I'm going to learn a lot from this. Hopefully it's accurate. It's not outstripping my processor's ability to do the calculations. Uranus has very vi variable orbit. Where did Pluto go? Is Pluto still around or have we lost it? Um, no, there, there it is. Pluto's there. So in the outer solar system, things have gotten a lot more chaotic. And just in case you're wondering if this sort of a thing occurs just with the regular Jupiter, maybe we should run that. So we've hit 30 years again. Maybe, uh, maybe I should, since we've seen quite a lot of changes here. Let's see how the regular solar system runs for 30 years. Okay, so we will run the regular solar system for a while. And then I will jump to the situation where... Jupiter is half the size of the Sun. We can see the current paths. Let's see the orbits. Well, the orbits don't seem to be changing at all. Well, nope, very steady. I wonder if, if I let it run for long enough, the system with a quarter, quarter Sun Jupiter or a tenth Sun Jupiter would eventually end up in an equilibrium of some kind. And I'm willing to do those long-term experiments, by the way. I think that'll be an interesting thing to run, like, while I'm out and the computer can just churn on it. So maybe I'll let it do that. I don't want to go too fast, otherwise it'll end up introducing inaccuracies. Right now I think it's pretty accurate. Let's see, sim... Uh, let's see, details... I don't know, it says simulation error on error on the order of 30 meters per second. I don't know how to scale that to things. I mean, 30 meters per second, It's you're talking, these numbers are about 70 miles an hour. So, I mean, I don't know what that, what to think about that. Oh, they have a, yeah, in relation to light speed, not much. So yeah, hopefully this is sufficiently accurate. I wonder how inaccurate it can get. But anyway, you can see how the solar system runs normally. Now let's go to a half sun-sized Jupiter. Okay, here we go. 0.5. Nice and bright. Still bad flare effects. The asteroids are going all over the place now, very quickly. Venus's steady orbital period now has some perturbations. Earth, very high differences, 351 to more than a tenth of a year. Ceres actually made a loop-the-loop -loop of Jupiter. Jupiter is coming in pretty close. Mars is actually further out than Jupiter right now. Or no, it, it's not. It's actually clo still closer. But it's... Uh, yeah, Jupiter has half of its old orbital period. Saturn is uh, 
Well, Saturn's got one of those crazy orbits again. It's got. It looks like it's going to meet up Jupiter at some point. Now it's on the, on exit, but I think it's going to be captured by Jupiter pretty soon. Let's see how that looks when it's not in orbit. So Saturn's going to be pulled back by Jupiter here. No point in wondering about what the other planets are doing. Uh, right now it doesn't look like much, but if you take a look at their orbits, it's going to be changing like crazy. Oh, doesn't he want to show it? Oh, that's interesting. Mars and Vesta are in orbit around Jupiter. Saturn, well now it's regained its orbit around the Sun. Ceres is like that. Oh, Vesta just got flung out again. Mars has gotten flung out. Mars is on exit. Uranus is on exit. Neptune is coming back in it looks like as Jupiter came on its side now. Uranus... Okay, Uranus is back. Pluto's still here. Jupiter has Vesta again. But Mars is all over the place. I think Mars is gone for good. What is Jupiter orbiting at? Uh, Jupiter's... Jupiter's got a very eccentric orbit, uh, 0.36. Six year orbit. About half what it used to be. Earth now occasionally goes closer than Venus. Orbital period 310 days sometimes. High of 316. Climate really hot. Probably survivable. Venus well, it's still runaway greenhouse effect and all that. But what's going on here? Uh, Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is doing something weird with Pluto, I think. Jupiter is coming rather close, and it's still got Ceres and Vesta in its orbit. No, I think uh, Ceres might be in the. No, it's orbiting both. Uranus is still confused. Pluto, now things objected. Mars, Mars is not coming back. Mars is not coming back. Saturn, Saturn might not be coming back. I, no, Saturn, Saturn is indecisive. I think, whoa, uh, Earth just got captured by Jupiter. Earth is now orbiting Jupiter with Vesta. The Sun only has Mercury and Venus left. Oh, uh, maybe the sun can get Vesta back? Nope, Vesta's been slung out. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Ceres is, uh, looking goners. Saturn is looking goners. Neptune is still trying. Okay, let me uh, run this to 50 years and we'll see what's left of our solar system. Okay, well, we're coming up on 40 years and let me give you a status update. Earth was briefly recaptured by the Sun, but it's back with Jupiter now. Jupiter is currently orbiting... still in uh, where it was, basically. Earth has a 200-day period or so around Jupiter. Climate, hot really hot. Stuff continues to happen. Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto are the outer planets constantly looking like they have some sort of really elliptical orbit. Mars, Mars is gone. Ceres is gone. Saturn, amazingly, is gone. And uh, Vesta, Vesta eh, might still hang out. But I think it's also gone. Let's look at the trails. Sometimes, I mean, actually, when it comes to elegant orbits, actually, the trails make it look a lot neater than it would otherwise. If you just look at the orbits, it's not quite as much fun, actually. The trails. Now, uh, Mercury, of course, in a very steady orbit, but it's making this little spiral. 
and the Sun is moving in, with respect to Jupiter looks sort of like that and Jupiter Jupiter's got a bunch of little asteroids around it that's why it's got some of the little flickering lights around it there Earth you can see is in a very odd orbit it's more influenced by Jupiter than the others still no equilibrium after 50 years Earth in an orbital period of 138 39 days around the Sun orbital eccentricity 0.87 And if we pause and take a good look at it, well, it doesn't look pretty, folks. Now, I didn't mean to do any damage, but uh, clearly having a very bright Jupiter has not done well for the Earth. But what happens if Jupiter was equal in mass to the Sun? Let's find that out next. Okay, here we go. Jupiter in terms of the Sun 1 okay well let's keep it to trails because that's sort of the more well it, it just looks better and let's see what happens one month per second Mars is sort of heading well no it's uh, given the motion of the Sun it's not heading too far out Saturn's really really serious here Actually, the Sun and Jupiter seem to be much more decisively orbiting each other. The Sun's arc is very wide and Jupiter's... Yeah. Earth... I think Earth might end up being really cold this time. Earth is heading out. Yep, Earth now has an orbital period of 8 years, 9 years, 10 years. Got shot out. Saturn... Made a loop the loop of Jupiter there. Mercury? Nope, Mercury. Where are you, Mercury? Mercury's still 88 days, but certainly more perturbed than usual. Venus, though. Venus is totally different. Let's take a look at the orbits now. Well, yeah, that's. that's different. Jupiter has captured Venus. Earth is all the way out there. 14 year orbit at the moment. But you can see, I mean, just within the course of a month, how much these orbits change in this circumstance. Will they ever become stable? Earth's periapsis seems awful low. No, it's raising it now. Up, oh, Venus got tossed back to the sun. Jupiter's has got Saturn and Earth. Pluto is looking like that right now. Okay, trails again. How's Mercury? Mercury's fine. Venus. Venus is worse off. Mer uh, Venus, if you can imagine, is hotter than it used to be. Venus is back around Jupiter. Earth is really cold now, I bet. I'm at negative 148 degrees Celsius. And again, it really depends on right where I decide to increase the mass of Jupiter. If I decide to increase the mass of Jupiter when Earth is in one angle, one phase angle with it, then it is going to have a very different effect. We might get a hot Earth or a cold Earth. Now that was an interesting turn. Look at the path of Earth like there. That was a nifty turn.
It's interesting. Uh, the sun makes these very sharp loops. But Jupiter, even though it now has the same mass as the sun, makes these broad loops, probably indicative of its initial motion around the sun. And the fact that it's... I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if we could uh, change this all to be relative to Jupiter, but uh, I think that's it, and it's still gonna make those loops. So, so yeah, yeah, I think it's its initial motion around the sun that's causing the wider loop like that. Mercury's got much more variation. What just got shot out? Oh, Venus just got shot out. Venus had a close encounter with... Was it, yeah, it must have been a close encounter with Jupiter flying by around there. or And the Sun. And that probably got captured by Jupiter for a second and uh, got flung out by the Sun like that. And it looks like uh, Earth is going really fast out now. Motion... 124 kilometers per second. It's normal is about 29. It's it's going out really fast, faster than we saw with any of the others uh, in the previous simulation with uh, half sun sized Jupiter. Okay, let me let this run for a while. Actually, it's very hot right now. Why is Earth so hot all the way out there? Um, here, let me enable to climb it again. It's gonna pause for a sec. Okay, now it's suddenly turned to ice. Yeah, it seems to take a good minute to enable climate on Earth. Uh, we're not getting any simulation done right now. Best to do it beforehand then. I don't know what it entails exactly. I'll have to take a look, but uh, yeah, it's taking its own sweet time getting it done. Seems like it's turned Earth cold. It's not reading it here right now. We could actually get a chart of the surface temperature. Is that what that means? Probably shouldn't do this right now. Yeah, we could get a chart of the temperatures, but uh, yeah. It's choking on the whole enable climate thing. This is not my processor, by the way. It's... Uh, it's not taking up more than an uh, eighth of my processor right now during this pause. So I don't know what's causing it to choke like this. Okay, well I just paused the simulation because it was just taking too long to get this Enable Climate done. Let me see if I play it now whether it'll be alright. No, it's still slow. Okay, let me pause it again now and I'll turn off Enable Climate and see if it can run properly. Okay, so when it's on, albedo, it just says 0.29. Oh, I think it uh, dynamically changes the albedo maybe. Let's see. Okay, well now the simulation rate can run, but uh, yep, yeah, looks like it's not simulating the climate properly. Hmm. Well, I'll have to play around with that. Okay, you know what? I think maybe I'll try this position lock thing. Uh, the Sun and Jupiter seem to be making this sort of path pretty consistently. But what happens if I turn position lock on for the Sun? Let's see what the paths look like then. I think it's just gonna stay there. I'll see. Mercury's still hanging out around the Sun. Everything else is sort of elsewhere. Saturn's there, Neptune there, Uranus, Pluto, Vesta. Vesta is definitely on its way out. Earth is way off. Ceres is way off. Venus is the real high flyer. It's sort of like going Voyager on us. So the simulation seems to have a better time of it when you lock the Sun. So if we take a look at the trails, Jupiter now has a very definite orbit around the Sun. It, uh, it has a 4.78 year orbit. Seems like the periapsis, I don't see how the, this periapsis and apoapsis are correct. It seems like it's actually in a very circular orbit.
Mercury's still hanging out there. So we've stopped the position of the Sun. And if you take a look at orbits, unfortunately because there's a star now, it doesn't really show its orbit like that. But Saturn has a stable orbit around the Sun. What we have here is Pluto does not have a stable orbit around the Sun. Vesta doesn't have a stable orbit. So even with the Sun fixed, these guys have very variable orbits. Neptune seems to be heading out and Uranus seems to be heading out. Alright, so that is the fate of the solar system when Jupiter suddenly be tries to become a binary companion to the Sun. Now, I am interested in trying to build a stable binary system. That's something I'm gonna take a look at. But I just wanted to have fun here and if you guys have any projects you want to propose, uh, something you'd want to see, please do contribute that in the comments and I'll take that into advisement if it sounds interesting. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like and I'll see you next time.